if you want to. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, it says we're live now. So, welcome everybody to Wire Wednesday. I believe it's number nineteen, and today we're going to talk about uh, acrylic color options for your lab. Uh, what different people do in their lab as far as color cards, color guides, and the acrylic that they choose and and uh, why they choose them and marketing and all that stuff. Uh, special guest today is Josh Dobson from Dobson Ortho Lab. And if you haven't heard of him, you've been under a rock or you haven't been on Facebook because he's one of the better contributors to the Facebook group. So uh, say hi, Josh, to everybody. Hello, everybody. Uh, we, I'm going to give you a little, uh, let's see, I, a little history of your lab. Like, how, let's talk about that first. How did you get into the industry? Um, how your lab started and where you're at right now? Well, I mean, it, it all started actually back in Wisconsin. Um, my entire family uh, worked at, uh, well, professional positioners to start, which mm -hmm. then, uh, um, you know, AOA spun off of that. And then eventually down the road, Ormco bought professional positioners and then AOA and professional positioners became one. Uh, so my, my parents have been uh, with AOA from 1981. Uh, oh. And that, that was, you know, obviously when pro professional positioners was. Um, my dad actually left professional positioners in 87 to start the tooth positioners at AOA. Oh, and wow. so um, my dad was director of operations um, at AOA. My mom was the senior lead of the aligner department at AOA. Uh, I actually started in 1998 in the shipping room. Uh, there at AOA and uh, eventually became the purchasing materials manager and then uh, ended up uh, moving down to Georgia in 2013 to work with specialty for a couple years and then uh, we opened up uh, in 2016 uh, here in Gainesville Georgia uh, of our own lab. Wow so you're a pretty new lab Dobson ortho yes. lab. Yes. But you have a a history, a family yes. history. We, uh, we opened up with uh, over 130 years of manufacturing experience. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. I, I didn't even know y'all you had that backstory. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, did specialty, is, is Georgia their home base? Yes, okay. they're, they're about 15, 20 minutes on the road. Okay, did your parents retire out of AOA? Uh, uh, no, we we actually we all took jobs done at specialty at the same time. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so that they you got recruited. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. They get the Dobson family. <laughs> you get three for one. And yeah. uh, well, do you have siblings and stuff? Well, well, actually, it was my my brother also works uh, at the lab and moved and worked at specialty, and then my wife also did some work for them too. Wow. So, well, okay. So then, currently, you you've opened up in 2016. And so where are you at currently? So, so currently we have six people, uh, all family members, um, both my parents, uh, myself and my brother, the four of us are owners. And then my wife is the uh, re retainer, uh, the acrylic lead and wire lead. And then uh, my sister-in-law, my brother's wife, uh, is in our customer service. What a family affair. <laughs> I did not even know that. Oh, wow. See, you know, a lot of people say don't work with your family, but you're the exact polar opposite of that. Yep. Every, everyone here is family. That's cool. I like that idea. That means y'all get along at least. Most days. <laughs> <laughs> so when there's a family function, you, you know, y'all can take off together, right? Uh, not always. <laughs> uh, you know, we've, we've learned not so much the first uh, year, year and a half. But as we've gotten busier, uh, it is harder and harder to take off, um, basically because uh, I myself am the only one that does metals. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife uh, is the only one that does the acrylic and the wires for retainers. Uh, she's the only one that does splints. Um, and then my, uh, my dad is the only one that does tooth positioners. Uh, my mom backs him up, but you know, usually when one's gone, the other is gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, um, and my brother does all the digital work. And uh, so you find that in order to take a few days off, you have to work like a week ahead of time. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if you want to take off around a holiday, there's that crunch of before you can leave and then the crunch when you get back. Exactly. We've, we've learned, you know, basically for the first, you know, little while here, it's going to be long weekends is about the max of what you can take off. 
and then you know we plan around Memorial Day and Labor Day and and stuff like that, where you have that that holiday there that obviously no work is going to get out. Oh yeah, yeah, that's uh, so true. Well, um, I uh, it, it now that you said that you've been open since 2016, it, it really shows y- y- your marketing guru. Because first off, uh, let me share my screen. I'll, I'll show your website from my view and. Uh, it is, uh, I really like the website. It's really nice and clean. And I'm a big fan of orange. Orange is my favorite color. I, I tell you, when we decided to open up the lab, um, I myself had, I was uh, the marketing manager over at Specialty. And, you know, my background is actually, I'm an accountant. Oh. Um, I, uh, I got my accounting degree, a uh, business management degree from University of Wisconsin. And um, so, I had no marketing experience. So when I was approached, hey, would you like to do this? It was, you know, I, I've messed with Photoshop a few times and and whatnot. So I was like, sure, I'll, I'll try it. You know, I can't guarantee anything. And then, uh, you know, I'm a very detail oriented person, which is what you need in marketing. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. you know, took to it like a fish to water. And, and uh, you know, luckily it's, it's, it's panned out. Um, you know, and when we were looking at starting a brand, um, all the other labs out there were blue and green, um, you know, with the exception, right? Yeah. yeah, with the exception to Neo and uh, and Dynaflex, which had red. And we we're like, you know, there's no labs out there that really have orange. And I really like the color. I I like how it, it looks, especially on a on both black and white backgrounds. And so we said, let's go with it. Yeah, that's uh, uh you're right. The the black. Oh, of course, my um, my. Let me stop this real quick. My the reason I like orange is because I went to high school and our our colors were orange and black. So okay. uh, I really feel your marketing there, your branding that you've done. Uh, so and the funny thing is, let me um, I'm going to show you one more my site, and uh, you'll you'll find this funny because I I noticed you have a a slogan called it's a hashtag you use on your uh, Instagram called your lab or, uh, what's your ortho lab, your ortho lab. Yeah. Right here. Oh, let me share my screen so everybody can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, yeah, your ortho lab. And I thought I was the first one that came up with this. Uh, Mine is your lab is here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, (laughs) somebody was thinking along the same lines. Uh, but I, you know, I, I want it to go orange also, but since I use so much white in my background, the orange was not a contrast, a good, it didn't show up as well. So I had to switch sure. to a red uh, for my logo. Uh, but uh, that, I thought that was funny. Uh, and I actually got that kind of from a, uh, uh, professionals, we're just lab people. Oh yeah. <laughs> Starting again. So, all right. If you're back, uh, you 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 have your standard Hollies. You have your standard, uh, you know, uh, any other appliance that you make. And so, you know, especially when you're trying to come up with a brand, the important thing is is that you there's two different philosophies for branding. You have a branded house, and you have a house of brands. Hmm. Uh, An example of a of a house of brands would be uh, something like uh, Procter and Gamble. They make 10,000 different things, 10 different thousand brands, and that, that is what makes up Procter & Gamble. Uh, and then you also have a branded house, which means you know something like for us here at, at uh, Dobson Ortho is all of the things that we make are Dobson Ortho products. Mm-hmm. We, aren't, we aren't making anything that is specific that we're going to have our own brand for it, um, that we're going to go market it separately. It's going to be under... Uh, our black and orange brand. And so, you know, when you take a look at, you want to create a brand that anybody is going to notice it and know that that's yours, which is really hard to do if you don't control it. Right. Um, (laughs) You know, I've worked at several uh, companies, uh, you know, worked with them outside of, of, of the company that I worked at. And, you know, there are, there are times where 
keeping that under control, especially if you have creative people, creative people don't like to be put into a box. Oh yeah. And so when they come up with something that is brand new and they want to run with it, you really have to ask yourself, is this going to, if someone sees this, are they going to know that this is ours? And so it's difficult to portray, especially with acrylics, which is basically the only real, you know, I, I use the term customized loosely here, but that's the truly the only customized thing that we want to see as lab people. You know, I don't want to get uh, a quad helix in that has 10,000 different custom aspects to it because that's not, that's not how the lab is, is going to make money. The, the more custom it is, the more time consuming it is. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, with acrylics being the separate thing, I really wanted to portray in the color guide that this is bold, uh, but it's still part of our brand. Um, you know, that was the only thing that I was going to let get away from our, our style guide. Um, you know, it, your style guide is what you set up. And actually, I can share uh, what ours looks like here. Just so that everyone knows, because uh, I might be using terms that uh, that non-marketing people are are. <laughs> yeah, remember we're technicians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we don't have your background. So we'll share this. Let me know when that pops up. Yeah, it's on there. Yeah. So basically, what you do in a style guide is you come across and say, "This is our logo. These are the things that that make our logo unique, and these are the ways that we can use our logo." Um, you know, the thing that, that marketing people hate to see is someone that takes a logo and, and we've all done it is that you throw it into a word document and you try to make it bigger, but in making it bigger, you make it too wide or too tall. Oh yeah. Um, and so, or someone will, won't have the right font and it will translate wrong. Like as, as this down here. Oh so, yeah. So, I mean, you, you really have to be careful, you know, and, and this is why a lot of companies, when you ask them to put their logo on the website. You know, for instance, uh, you know, a, a lot of us will use three shape software or something like that. And if we want to promote that we use that, you may get some pushback about using their logo on your site just because they can't control all these different aspects. Uh, you know, another thing is also what what type of uh, color match that you yeah. have. I mean, there's 10,000 different oranges and, you know, not all of them look good on the colors that we have chosen. Um, you know, as far as when you put things on paper, how much space needs to, white space needs to be on each side of, of the logo. Um, you know, how, how things can be rotated are wow. things that, that, are, that are dictated. Um, you know, here's his shows like what kind of white space that you need to have in between. Um, how you can correctly put a tagline. You know, these are all things that not everybody uh, thinks about. And this is how brands can get out of whack. Uh, you know, especially here, you know, you know, yeah, that's, that's, that's an orange, but that's not the orange that we want. Um, so, you know, these are things that is, if you go to a marketing firm, the first thing they're going to do is, okay, what, what can we do to start your brand? You know, there, there's examples of how you can use on what kind of backgrounds, like for instance, on this one down here, it's a very busy background. So when you have a transparent logo, it's not going to pop out as much as it would say up here. Right. So, um, you know, being in the, the, the marketing person, um, you know, my, my dad is, has always told me, hey, look, you take it, you run with it. I want nothing to do with this. <laughs> but in doing so, you kind of have to keep everybody else in check, you know, especially because everyone wants to do their own thing. Um, you know, and then you have other things of your brand, which is the background imagery, which if you look on our website, you can see these hexagon shapes. I did see that. Yeah. Uh, that's also present in our booth for our trade shows. Um, you know, and, and, and that, those are things that, that you have to set inside, uh, side and say, this is what we want. And there are other things that we don't want. Um, you know, the exception as we were getting to here is our color guide. Our color guide does not actually, it sort of fits our brand. Um, but as you can see here, it, it does not fit the typical black and orange, uh, look that we have. Um, and I'll actually, this should show here better. This is our updated color guide. Oh yeah. Um, but you know, this, this shows basically that we wanted to go is look, there's a lot of color options here. This is bold. Uh, this is, you know, we, this is the kind of the tagline we went with it, your treatment, your expression, your style. So 
you know, we wanted to be able to portray as, look, you know, our typical is black and orange, but you know what? We have this whole barrage of colors that you have. And, and we wanted it to be appealing to the eye. You know, this was kind of where I was able to use uh, my own uh, artistic notation as far as, you know, the bright colors and, and stuff like that, while still trying to, you know, keep the flavor of that this is Dobson Ortho Lab. Well, yeah, and, and notice in just the naming of your colors, which I wanted to get into uh, maybe a little later or right now, you, you, you know, you, and, you know, it was, it was close enough. And so we're like, okay, well, we'll market that one as our custom option and uh, everything else would stay standard. And uh, interestingly enough, we've had, you know, qu actually quite a few requests for that orange. <laughs> well, I would have ordered it too, because I like, I like that orange. <laughs> so uh, that, that's my favorite. Polly Bender, and we actually met and then actually worked in the same department and had never done any acrylic work ourselves. And actually, I have to give you and, and Steve uh, Zara mad props because it was your videos that actually helped us get, <laughs> get up and running. <laughs> we apologize in advance <laughs> for any issues you ran into. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, in taking a look, you know, I had been used to some of the colors that AOA used, um, you know, and then and with specialty. And, you know, we decided, you know, the the vendor that we use, we use Langex, um, had you know they had their own colors and we're like you know let's let's make these you know sound interesting sound sound appealing themselves and so um you know together you know mainly my wife came up with a lot of the names um and then i came up with with the numbering scheme yeah how does that um it, i like you get that a little bit uh why and and uh, how you came up with the numbering scheme uh uh yeah. well Okay, well, I'll explain that. Is that uh, you know I came from a, an operations background in purchasing, so part numbers were my life. Mm. Uh, so I had to come up with a way that I was like, okay, so if someone didn't put the actual color, how is a technician going to know what colors to use? And so uh, you know we use a seven-digit part number system, so it's three numbers, a dash, and then four numbers. Well, all of our monomers are in the 8,000 series. All of our polymers are in the 1,000 series. And so I gave a unique number, uh, you know, starting from zero and all the way to nine based on what color it was. So, uh, you know, a, like a red polymer would have been a, uh, a three. Uh, I started, I think, with pink with, with two. And so when you actually take the monomer and the polymer together, these, these numbers here, you actually add the numbers together and these numbers will actually tell the technician too. And so when you actually take the monomer and the polymer together, these, these numbers here, you actually add the numbers together, and these numbers will actually tell the technician what colors go into it. Oh my gosh. That's, and that, that goes along with the branding, so your colors are consistent every time. Yes, exactly. So they're not grabbing the wrong bottle. So you don't actually have a bottle of periwinkle, you have this. Yeah. We, color we, and this color exactly we, we have you know basically the the monomers we have are these colors up here clear pink red orange yellow green blue purple and black and then uh in each we have uh, uh fluorescent colors which are glow in the dark um that would be all of all of these colors and then all the different custom colors the bolder colors are just a combination of a colored monomer and a colored polymer oh so they can look at the number, add them up, and go grab this fluorescent. Grab this. Basically, made this for myself because uh, <laughs> my my wife is is a very detailed person. I mean, you know, she she'll she'll see the number and know exactly what it is. I'm like, okay, for the person that's not going to pay attention, which would be me. Okay, now how how would I take a look at this and go, okay, I need to use a uh, a neon blue polymer and a clear monomer. <laughs> oh, gotcha. And that way, it didn't have to get spelled out exactly. on on each uh, work order, work ticket, or uh, whatever you use. Uh, exactly. I've I've always been a proponent that the smarter technician makes a a better technician. Uh, but there are, there are certain times where you just have to kind of you know uh, give them a break and say, okay, you know, let's let's spell some things out too, so that you don't have to remember everything. Oh yeah, and we've all run into the problem of. The technician was like, I swore I saw glow in the dark pink when it was said clear pink. You know, your yeah. mind just reads something into it and you're you're like, Well, we gotta redo this now. 
because uh, we can't pass off, you know, <laughs> glow in the dark pink for clear pink. Exactly. Lost my mouse. There it is. This is was one of my first color cards back in 2007. I, I don't know if you can see that very well. Uh, we actually used. I found this the star mold chocolate mold mm -hmm. star for in the I was in house lab tech while I was going through college, and uh, I found this in a drawer. I was like, "What is this for?" And he and the doctor was like, "Oh, we used to sprinkle acrylic in them, make little little uh, things that you could show the patient if they wanted to see what a you know a purple looked like or something." Sure. And so I took that from him when I opened my own lab, and I I made them all the colors, and uh, it when you popped them out, they were shiny, so you didn't have to pumice or buff them or anything. It was perfectly smooth. Yeah, I was just going to ask you. I was like, that looks like a nightmare. But <laughs> yeah, that's what was great about these little chocolate molds. They didn't interact with the acrylic, and then you you just pop them out like an ice cube tray. Okay. <laughs> and, and then you would I put them on uh, model trimmer the mm -hmm. backs to even them up. And then I super glued them to this plastic frame backside and slid it underneath. And now this is before I knew about marketing my lab and stuff. So I put the doctor's logo in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so it was the doctor's logo and my colors on there. And so they could choose from the, but you see why I stopped doing this. Those stupid little things would fall off. The doctor's office would lose them or you couldn't super glue them back on. And then I have to make them all again. Yep. And then the little frame got beat up and stuff. Uh, so do you do you currently only offer a paper? Uh, yes, and and I'll tell okay. you I'll tell you why is when we uh, went to we actually opened the business at the AAO in 2016 in Orlando, and we made every single we made little round chips, and uh, took those to the show with us, and uh, I basically just took one of those um like a like a chain like a pull chain. Oh yeah, I have yeah. a. A, a picture of that, I think. Yeah, and and so we we just had that and just had them looped in a, in a chain and had them sitting on the table. And uh, you know, we had numerous accounts saying, "Can you make us one of those?" And I'm like, "Do you know how much labor <laughs> yeah, right into that?" <laughs> but uh, you know, being in marketing, um, you know, I knew that if I could match um, Pantone, and this this is actually um, uh, oh. you know came came from a print shop. I have every single Pantone color that I knew if I could match them up with the acrylic and put them onto a, a piece of paper, we could get pretty close to what that acrylic was going to turn out as. The, the only one that's oh. really trouble is I know that there are a lot of orange acrylics that are more translucent than they are opaque. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we had, you know, you obviously have to have the caveat that you can't guarantee uh, that the color is going to be an exact of what you think it's going to be. Um, but you know, we can get pretty close. Yeah, that's, uh, and, and so going on to that, I'm, I'm glad you talked about using that Pantone. Uh, yes. uh, no, I, so I use a JVC acrylic, uh, just, uh, I've always liked working out. Work. Fool me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, you know, I have an accounting degree and so, you know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> oh, good point. You know, and, and the naming of them. Um, and then obviously we kind of hit some of the local things. I mean, we went with a with a Georgia peach, um, mm -hmm. and, and you know we we came up with a gray color that uh, we're like I, I don't know what we can do with it. And we're like the last thing we saw was an African gray parrot. So we're like okay, African gray, let's go with it. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> that, but that's great. But but a lot of the things were were just kind of you know how how can we make these colors sound cool? And you yeah. know, I mean, you could use tomato red or you can use hibiscus um you know one of the ones that actually has become a favorite uh was we had uh lang actually had to discontinue their contemporary colors which had us we had to change now some of the colors that we offered and so we went with uh it was an electric yellow and we poured it up and we're like that looks like mountain dew we're like <laughs> well, we, we can't use mountain dew and then we're like well, how about mountain dude <laughs> that has to be my favorite name <laughs> That you've come up with is Mountain Dude. So that that's how that one came up. We're like, well, it looks like Mountain Dew, but we can't use Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, that's hilarious. I was going to bring that up too. That that when you when you posted that on Facebook or it was your Instagram, I was like, oh, that is a perfect name for that. <laughs> you know, and you know, and and 
I know we don't mark patients, but we kind of do in a way. And that was my whole stint for creating retainerdesigner.com uh, and offering this online uh, design your own retainer. You know, this is back into the HTML. It was super slow. Uh, but I knew my, yeah. and it may just be because the orthodontist doesn't want the kids sitting in the chair for an hour looking. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, you give them the option of one of these and it's still up to the doctor what they pre present to the patient. Yep. And, and that um, was also another reason of why we went with a, a different branding scheme of our, our acrylic colors was we knew the person looking at it in end was going to be, uh, the patient. Yeah. Yeah, and so you wanted, you wanted the, the vibrant colors and, you know, whether, whether we like it or not, you know, any pictures we put out on our website, people will take those and they put them into their blogs. I mean, I get random hits on our website and I take a look at where it came from and it was someone talking about a, a Holly retainer they just got. And yeah. our, our picture was the one that they found and they posted yeah, it I, with their friends. <laughs> I found many of my pictures from my, to choose a color or I got that. So that's something that we have to kind of deal with uh, when coming up with a color guide is, uh, can it be divisible? It, have you thought of anything like that where you like, if you want the basic colors, here's want the basic colors, here's this one. If you I've, I think I've seen a color guide out there and I want to say it was. You know, how you can help limit those is, you know, obviously, you know, from experience is that if you offer a tie dye, you don't want to offer that at the same price that you would pour in a pink tint because that was there's. A next subject is what you know you know i'll pay for it if mm -hmm. it's 50 bucks extra and then the, the doctor if, if you've ever seen the movie the matrix and remember the uh the movie poster for it he put one of those on an acrylic palette using mm -hmm. acrylic colors and he he knew exactly how to layer and all that and it was amazing the people that would upcharge or pay for that upcharge and they kept him busy all day for weeks that's all he did was he was the art artistic, was, the artistic, artistic one. you know, he had his special burrs and, and, you know, he would blend the acrylics on the fly and then lay them all. That's amazing. Them. Oh, it was, it was phenomenal. So he needs to make a YouTube channel and yeah. we all learn from him. And, uh, cause you know, most of us only learn from what we've been taught or what we've learned, uh, or failed experiments, many failed experiments. Uh, like you just, uh, post it your rose gold no yes uh you're and i was trying to somebody had asked for rose gold and i was like oh i don't know even how to start on that because that's a unique color uh, and added gold uh, uh gold glitter and we're like well you know we've tried and we're like we really don't want to put glitter with an opaque color because it yeah. just it looks like junk mm -hmm. and we're like you won't be happy with it so we're like you know pink tint and that's what it was. It was pink tint and gold glitter. And so, you know, took a look at it. And my wife's like, looks like rose gold to me. And I was like, all right, let's take a picture of it. <laughs> the, oh, that's a new one on the menu. Yep. <laughs> Come up with them on the fly. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so we've, we've uh, mostly covered everything. Um, let's see. I think I, I had something that was uh, I was going to show. Maybe I don't have any more. Oh yeah, that it was that what I used to use, and uh, that's <laughs> that old school method. Uh, so uh, yeah, we, when, when we made ours, uh, we actually started out with um, the little disposable shot glasses, the little plastic cups. Yeah, and we we're like, oh, that's gonna be perfect because it'll be nice glossy finish, and then everything just bonded in there. And so we're like, what, what can we come up with? So we actually, uh, with our 3D printer, printed a blank and then pressed out a mouth guard blank over top of it. And that created the mold for us that we could use. And it was flexible enough you could pop them right out. Oh, that's genius. Yeah. And so those are actual pictures? I mean, a photo of the color on your color? No, no, that's, that's, uh, that's digital. That's all done okay. in, uh, okay. in Adobe. But, um, you know, I, I took the Pantone thing and went outside where there's natural light and then matched them up and that's the exact match. Oh, wow. So that's a, I, man, that's a, a lot going. I know when I talked to Priscilla, but it's still up and kids still get on there and save their designs. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you, um, uh, yeah, I'll show you 
Um, and they say they're designed, but those were actual photos. Okay, so um, that that's an actual picture of a model and an actual picture of a green retainer on the model. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then I took polka dots, but and you could choose you know zebra stripes or whatever you want to put on there, and change the. So then that is actually the pink version of the solid color, but transparent in between the zebra stripes and layered on top. So I, I was trying to get the reflection of the retainer in because I was trying to get as close as I could to the colors yes. so that the kids aren't as disappointed when they get their color. In. So, uh, but the funny thing was, you know, this is old, but kids going back to what we were talking about before, you know, this was March 24th, this girl power, you know, they, she created this the world's best retainer. <laughs> and so they're still creating their own designs and, you know, things like, like this one with the, the camo, I never call it camouflage cause, uh, it, I just use camo pattern or whatever. Uh, I never could get that to ever look right on here, but you know, it's close enough to what I make. And, and that's how I created the, um, my YouTube was I wanted to show other labs how to do these five designs. Um, the camo half and half polka dot stripes, swirl tiger, zebra stripe. I was how to get them to do those designs easily. But then it just led into, Oh, I need more videos. Show me how to do this and show yes. me how to do this. And uh, go, going in, segueing into, uh, and this will be our last subject is, 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 you know, marketing your, lab like instagram so lab like instagram so um your insta page you you use that to market uh your lab and is there anything else that you use um you know we use facebook uh instagram uh we also have a twitter account uh the nice thing about you know especially down the road is that you can use one and post to multiple at the same time yeah yeah, that's once you connect them all together, that it, helps out a lot. Exactly. And, you know, I, I think with, you know, especially how, with the political schemes and stuff like that, I think more people are backing off on Facebook, uh, but actively use Instagram. And actually, we launched our Instagram earlier this year and had 300 followers within uh, two weeks. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so we're like, okay, well, you know, let's, let's go with this then. And then, so, um, you know, I'm, uh, I, I love doing design layouts and stuff like that. So, uh, I use, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not bashful about admitting, you know, I use Snapseed. Uh, that's, a I think it's a Google product, but, uh, with my, in conjunction with my iPhone, uh, take some pictures while I'm in the lab and then just go to work. Um, so, come up with something. Explain what is Snapseed? Is that like a photo editing? Software? It's like a photo editing software. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you know, Photoshop and all that, but uh, there are times when I'm sitting on the lab where you know I really don't want to upload it to my computer and then go through all the the hassle. Oh yeah. That you know, there's 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 limitations to what fonts and stuff you can use, but I found that for Instagram purposes, um, you know, the combination between the iPhone and and Snapseed. And then Instagram uh, was a perfect match. Oh yeah, that's that's great. Well, um, I'm gonna end it here. I think we're past our our time, it, but it's been really great talking to you, and I really appreciate you um, coming on board and, and talking to us about this. Um, just one little aspect of the Ortho Lab business that we all have to run. Um, let everybody know where they can find you. Uh, yeah. We just talked about Instagram. Lost the account or whatever email I put it to, and I couldn't recover it. So uh, <laughs> that, that's the only one that's Dobson Ortho Lab. But uh, uh, you know, you can follow us on there. Um, I try to post pictures uh, fairly regularly, and that's that's also a thing, uh, especially with social media, is you need to have content. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. you're only going to post once every couple of months, uh, you're probably not going to retain your followers. Um, so. Uh, Make sure that if you're going to launch an Instagram page, you know, come up with 10, 12 photos right away before you even mm -hmm. launch it and then you know, plan out when you're going to going to release them. Well, and we'll we'll have you on again and we'll completely talk about social media marketing and stuff, which ties in with this. Uh, but, man, I really appreciate you coming out 
and, or coming out. <laughs> nice to e meet you, first of all. And uh, uh, we'd love to have you down for in Texas next April uh, to talk more about this stuff if you're, if you're able to. And I'll, I'll talk to you about that later on. But uh, uh, until then, stay on. Josh, you stay on.